Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about um, how we can take really odd looking equations like this and turn them into nice math friendly uh, functions that we could graph or do algebra with. So you've already read this problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just get to solving it. The first thing that I would do is I would write this position equation um, with alpha and beta written in. So 1.5 meters per second squared times t squared minus beta is 0 0.0, let's just say 0 0.05, uh, oh, sorry, meters per second cubed times t cubed. Uh, now we should talk for a second about why the t cubed and the s cubed um, correspond to each other. So basically, sometimes the AP test is going to ask you what should the units of this particular variable be. Uh, and the way that you know is basically this function needs to have an answer in meters because it's a position function. So when I plug in something for seconds, I need it to cancel out. So let's let's do, um, since we're going to do it anyway, let's do two seconds. When I plug in two seconds, uh, I'm going to have 1.5 meters per second squared. And I'm going to put in two seconds. That gets squared. 0.05 meters per second cubed times 2 seconds the whole thing cubed and what I'm gonna get is 1.5 times let me write this out 1.5 meters per second squared times 4 seconds squared minus 0.05 meters per second cubed times 8 right yeah seconds cubed. Okay, so think about why we needed to have an s cubed and an s squared here. It's so that when I multiply 0.05 by 8, the seconds cubed cancel and I'm left with meters because that's what I want in my position equation. The same here. The seconds squared cancel, leaving me with just meters, which is what I want uh, in my equation. And so at 2 seconds, uh, this ends up being uh, 5.6 meters um, and to kind of like store this and make it math friendly um, let me go ahead and just start over now that you've seen how the units work out and they agree let me write this a bit more math friendly um, if I was given a problem like this on the AP test I would probably just write x equals 1.5 t squared minus 0.05 t cubed. This is a much more math friendly equation to me. I can understand how to graph it um, and how to do algebra with it. I'm just sort of like getting rid of the units. So when I write out my um, numbers, uh, you know, I can write x of 0, and I know that when I plug 0 in for t, uh, I'm going to end up getting 0, so the position at t equals 0 is uh, 0 meters. And then at 2, we already found that 5.6 meters. Uh, and then now, when I plug in 4 seconds to the two t's, uh, I can just put it in my calculator, and I'm going to get um, 20.8. So this is just sort of a, a simple way of organizing your functions. Um, it's it's clean, you can see what's going on, and, and basically I didn't have to work with the units every time to remember that my unit, uh, the output, needs to be in meters because it's positions. Okay, so here's what I do with this. I need to find um, the average velocity for three different intervals. So for A, uh, remember average velocity, I'll just write this generally up here, is the change in x over the change in time. Uh, and delta always means final minus initial, right? x2 minus x1 or x minus x0. Um, and for my interval of 0 to 2 seconds, I would do x of 2 minus x of 0, um, which would be 5.6 minus 0. And then over 2 seconds minus 0 seconds, which is really just 5.6 divided by 2. And that gives you... Uh, 2.8 meters per second. And then the average velocity from 0 to 4 seconds, right, 4 seconds minus 0 seconds is 20.8. 20 
minus 0, which is really just a fancy way of saying 20.8 over 4. Uh, and that's going to give you 5.2. And the average velocity from the interval of 2 to 4 seconds, um, I would do 4 seconds minus 2 seconds. Hopefully you see that's a change in time of 2 seconds, not 6. Uh, and then I would do 20.8 meters minus 5 0.6 meters and that's going to give me 7.6 meters per second so basically by writing our equation in this sort of math friendly graphable way um, it's it's easy for us to organize our thoughts and our work um, for calculating you know things like average velocities um, and what we're gonna find is that it also is useful if we wanted to try and solve something uh, with uh, a graphing calculator so you're allowed to use a graphing calculator on the AP test and if you wanted to graph this function you would just go to y equals and then you would plug in 1.5 use x if you would like squared minus 0.05 x caret 3 uh, and you can grab this function. Um, you can also graph multiple functions with your calculator and you know do all kinds of graphing things but let's uh, let's just talk about probably the the one way that you're going to use graphing uh, or graphable equations with with constant velocity that's going to be our biggest application so here is a problem where two objects are moving with constant velocity and we're going to use this graphability of our equations to answer this problem Two cars are driving in the same direction. Car A has a constant velocity of 65 meters a second, while car B has a constant velocity of 45 meters per second and is 25 meters ahead. Where will car A pass car B? Okay, so for this, I'm going to draw A and B, little boxes. No big deal, you can put wheels on them if you want. Ooh, ooh. Um, it says car B is 25 meters ahead, so let's, let's start by doing this the initial position of a so x a not because that's the initial position of a let's call that zero and that would make the initial position of b x boo 25 meters and we'll say that it's to the right so that would be a positive 25 meters they're driving in the same direction that's important so car a has a velocity we'll call va remember average velocity here and that average velocity is 65 my, uh, meters per second. I'm going to write a positive to remind myself that it's moving to the right. B, and I can put like a little arrow here if I want to represent VA. B is also moving to the right, but with a smaller velocity. Uh, and the velocity of B in the same direction, so it's also positive, is 45 meters per second. So here's what I can do with this information. I can write a graphable equation for the position of car A and a graphable equation for the position of car B. It will look like our position equation for a car moving with constant velocity. This is a graphable equation uh, where the slope is the speed and the initial position is the initial position. So for A, I would use the velocity of A, which would be 65. T, uh, and the initial position is zero, so I don't add anything. B would be 45T, and the initial position is 25. So with these two equations, I can graph them. Um, in fact, I can just do like a rough graph in my head, position, time. Uh, I know car A starts at zero and would have a really steep slope of 65. It's a position function of A. Uh, and car B starts at 25. And then has a less steep slope of 45. So without graphing paper, I don't necessarily know where this intersection occurs at. Um, but I know if I can find it, I will find when and where uh, car A passes car B. Using your graphing calculator for this is really easy you go to y equals you clear anything that's there uh, and i'm going to put in let's see 65x 
it's kind of confusing using x for t um, and y for x we'll look at that in a second then 45 x plus 25 okay I graph it uh, if your graphing window doesn't necessarily show this remember you can always click zoom uh, and there are different zoom features zbox is always really helpful um, but zoom zero zoom fit will always try to fit um, the important graph information so if there's an intersection a lot of the times you can just press zoom fit and it'll find it uh, but anyway our graph looks great so to find that intersection I click second trace or the calc button this gives me different calculate functions and I'm gonna click intersect when it says first curve you just need to take this little dot uh, and go to the left of the intersection and then second curve you go all the way over somewhere to the right of that intersection and then it will basically calculate where that oh guess just press enter you can guess anywhere it doesn't matter and it finds the intersection now this tells me the X which remember that's actually time because the x-axis is time is 1.25 so the inter the collision takes place after 1.25 seconds and the position of that collision is 81.25 meters so 1.25 and 81.25 I would go to my graph and I would label that 1.25 seconds 81.25 meters and my answer is 81.25 meters so if this was a question um, that you had for homework or that you were showing, basically you can just use this graph. You can sketch a graph and use what's on your calculator to um, show me that you were able to find the intersection. Of course, you could just set these two equations equal to each other because that's when they'll be in the same position. And solve for t. Then once you've solved for t, you're going to get 1.25 seconds. Uh, you could just plug that time back into either equation. Uh, but as the equations get more elaborate, that it becomes more and more difficult to do. You'll have to use quadratic equations and stuff like that. Um, okay, let's do one more collision, and then we'll call this video done. Two cars are 140 meters apart, driving at each other. Car A has a constant velocity of 55 meters a second, while car B has a velocity of 35 meters a second. How far will car A drive before hitting car B? Okay, so I'm just going to rough sketch this, A and B. Uh, maybe I want to draw their velocities just so that I know they're going towards each other. Uh, let's say that car A's initial position is zero, and car B's initial position, X boo, is 140. Now that's a positive 140 because it's to the right. Um, and, oh, you could swap this. You could say that B is at zero. That would make A at negative 140, but that might be a little confusing. Uh, and let me go ahead and write the average velocity of each. Now, this is where things are going to be uh, a little tricky. They're moving at each other, so I need to make VA a positive 55 meters a second and VB a negative 35 meters per second. Otherwise, when I graph these two lines, um, if they were both positive, there, there just wouldn't be an intersection or there would be the wrong intersection. Okay, now I can write my uh, equations, XA. Uh, remember, they will look like this. Uh, you're gonna have 55, you know, I don't need to use units if I don't want to. 55T uh, plus nothing, because there's no, in, in, um, initial position and then negative 35 T plus 140 okay so again I can just go ahead and sketch this graph I know what it's gonna look like a starts at 0 slopes up B starts at 140 and has a negative slope that's a little less steep so X B, X A. So if we can find this intersection using our graphing calculators, then we can figure out uh, how far car A will have traveled, which will be that number. Oh, there's the bell. Uh, we'll be able to find how far car A has traveled before it hits car B. So I open up my calculator. Go to Y equals clear my two previous lines. Uh, and I've got 55T. 
Well, I'm using X for T. Uh, and then you have to make this negative. If you don't make it negative, it won't work. And that is like 99% of the time, it, that's what you did wrong. Plus 140. I graph these two. Um, thankfully, I think the window works for this. Yeah, great. So I don't have to resize the window. I can see the intersection. I go to a second trace or calc down to intersect five. The first curve is, oh, sorry. Wow, that got weird. Um, let's just do it here. So, mm -mm, don't like that. Okay, so first curve, enter, and I go to, maybe you can hold it. Does it work if I hold it? Let's try the mouse. Oh, there we go, beautiful. Uh, and I press enter, guess, guess, I don't care, guess anywhere, enter. And it shows me the intersection. X is 1.5 uh, repeating. Remember, that's the time value because the X axis is our time axis. And then 85.5 repeating. So 1.5 is the time. It's important that you write that down just so um, I can see that you graphed it. And then 85.5 repeating meters. That is the position. So. Uh, where they collide is 85.5 meters from where car A started. And again, if you don't want to use your graphing calculator, um, they they will be in the same position when 55t equals negative 35t plus 140. So you can use this equation. It's very easy because it's no t squared. It's not cubed or anything like that. Um, so this will give you an answer of t equals 1.5 seconds. And you would plug that back into either equation, uh, and you would get a correct answer. Okay, great. So happy that you did this. Video is done.